For centuries, we have been driven to explore the vast expanse of the universe. However, our ability to do so has been limited by our ability to travel through it. But as we stand on the cusp of a new era in space exploration, we are on the verge of breaking through those limitations and reaching new heights. The distances between the stars are vast, and today's traditional propulsion methods just aren't up to the task of covering such enormous distances in a reasonable amount of time. This could change in the next few decades, as research is bringing us closer to the final frontier. In this episode, we cover the top 5 future space propulsion systems that will change space travel forever. Number 5. Solar Sails Solar sails are a form of propulsion that uses the radiation pressure of sunlight to push a spacecraft through space. They are made of a thin, reflective material that is stretched out into a large, flat surface. When sunlight hits the sail, it bounces off and pushes the sail in the opposite direction, providing a small but constant acceleration. One of the main advantages of solar sails is that they do not require any onboard fuel, making them an attractive option for long-duration missions. They can also be used to reach very high speeds, making them a potential option for interstellar travel. With our current technology, it would take around 6300 years to reach the nearest star from our solar system, Proxima Centauri. When we can finally adapt the solar sail technology for interstellar travel, it is possible to make the trip in about 20 years. Solar sails are an active area of research and development, with several prototype sails having been successfully deployed in Earth's orbit. In 2015, Light Sail 1 was successfully launched, followed by Light Sail 2 in 2019. Even though Light Sail 2 launched in 2019, I have included the following clip. Professor David Spencer from Purdue University and his team explain the details of this mission and how the sails work. Light Sail 2 will be the first solar sailing mission that can actually reorient itself relative to the sun and control its orbital energy. Our project is very small. We're sponsored by the Planetary Society. We have a few different organizations involved. I manage the project for the Planetary Society and I'm, I'm a professor here at Purdue University. And we also do modeling and simulation of the trajectory and the spacecraft orientation. And we'll also help with operating the mission here at Purdue. The satellite has to perform two maneuvers each orbit. And what those maneuvers are is essentially a turn so that when it's moving towards the sun, it's sort of feathered so that the sun isn't pushing on it. But when it's moving away from the sun, it's presenting as much area as possible to the sun so that we maximize the thrust. And so my work has been modeling those two turns so that we can make sure that they're happening correctly in the right direction. The Planetary Society is the largest space advocacy group in the world. In addition to their space advocacy, they also occasionally do some space technology development as well. And solar sailing uh, is one of their key priorities, and that really goes back to Carl Sagan, who was one of the initial founders. There's a just tremendously exciting prospect called solar sailing. Solar this, sailing. And this is a, uh, a very crude model, and which travels on the radiation and particles that come out of the sun, the wind from the sun. The advantage of a solar sail is that the sun is shining all of the time. So there's always that source of thrust. And it's the acceleration from a solar sail is admittedly very slow, but if you're patient, you can build up quite a large velocity over time. With even newer advancements in this field, NASA's ACS-3 mission is due to launch in 2023. Like Light Sail 1 and 2, this solar sail could be the next stage of achievement for space travel. With the continued research on solar sails, they could be used for many different types of missions within the next 20 years. Number 4. Antimatter Propulsion Antimatter has the potential to be an extremely efficient and powerful fuel source. When antimatter and matter come into contact, they annihilate each other and release a huge amount of energy in the form of photons. 
This energy, potentially could be harnessed, and used to power a spacecraft. So, how would an antimatter propulsion system work? First, antimatter would need to be produced and contained. This is a difficult task, as antimatter is extremely rare and unstable, and it requires a lot of energy to produce. Once it has been produced, it would need to be stored in a special containment system, such as a magnetic bottle, called a minimum magnetic field trap. This containment would prevent it from coming into contact with regular matter. Next, the antimatter would be injected into a propulsion system, such as a rocket engine. When the antimatter comes into contact with matter, it would annihilate and release a huge amount of energy. This energy would be used to heat and expand a gas, such as hydrogen, which would be expelled out of the back of the rocket, propelling it forward. While antimatter propulsion is still in the realm of science fiction, it has the potential to revolutionize space travel. Its high energy density and efficiency make it an attractive fuel source. It could potentially allow us to travel to other planets in other star systems. Number 3. Nuclear Fusion Propulsion Nuclear fusion is the process of combining atomic nuclei to release a huge amount of energy. It is the same process that powers the sun and other stars. In a fusion reaction, the positively charged nuclei of two hydrogen atoms come together to form a heavier helium nucleus. This reaction releases a tremendous amount of energy in the form of light and heat. With the recent breakthrough in December of 2022, scientists achieved fusion ignition. This brings us one step closer to fusion space travel. So, how can we harness this energy for space travel? The key to using nuclear fusion for propulsion is to contain the plasma or ionized gas created during the fusion reaction. This plasma is extremely hot, reaching temperatures of over 100 million degrees Celsius. In order to contain it, we use a device called a fusion reactor. Although these reactors do exist today, we would have to downscale the reactor technology immensely to use it for space travel. There are several different designs for fusion reactors, but one promising concept is the tokamak. A tokamak is a donut-shaped chamber with powerful magnets on the inside. These magnets are used to confine the plasma in the center of the chamber and prevent it from touching the walls. Once the plasma is contained, we can use it to heat a gas, such as hydrogen, which will then expand and escape through a nozzle. This creates thrust, propelling the spacecraft forward. This may not be the best solution for interstellar travel at this time, however, in the future we could see this being a huge advancement in space travel. Number 2. The Mega Drive. The Mega Drive, or the Mach Effect Gravity Assist Drive, is a proposed propulsion system that utilizes the principle of the Mach Effect. The Mega Drive would use a small, high-energy oscillating device to create a bubble of energy around the spacecraft. By adjusting the properties of this bubble, the craft would be able to move in any direction, essentially surfing on the bubble of energy. Physicists Jim Woodward and Hal Fern have developed the Mega Drive propulsion based on what they say is peer-reviewed, technically credible physics. The Mega Drive could potentially allow for speeds, up to a tenth of the speed of light, or about 30,000 km per second. This would drastically reduce travel time for missions to other planets, and even other star systems. It's a technology that could open up the entire galaxy to exploration and travel. However, there are still many technical challenges that need to be overcome before the Mega Drive can be realized. But with the potential for such a profound impact on space travel, it's a technology worth pursuing.
Number 1. Warp Drive. Warp Drive is a fascinating faster than light propulsion system that would allow a spacecraft to travel at speeds faster than light. The theory of a warp drive was first scientifically proposed by physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994, and it is based on the concept of warping the fabric of spacetime in order to move a spacecraft through it. The basic principle of the Alcubierre warp drive is that a bubble of spacetime is created around a spacecraft, and the bubble is then contracted in front of the spacecraft and expanded behind it. This creates a wave that the spacecraft can ride, allowing it to move through spacetime at speeds greater than the speed of light. In order for a warp drive to work, it would require a large amount of energy, and it would also require the manipulation of exotic matter. The concept of exotic matter is a hypothetical form of matter that has negative energy density, which would be needed to create the required negative pressure to make the bubble. There has been recent breakthroughs in the area of warp bubbles. This recent breakthrough, however still in the lab, and in theoretical stage, means that it is possible to create a stable bubble of space-time without the need for exotic matter, however, the energy needed for it is still unavailable today. The breakthroughs in the area of warp bubbles open up new possibilities for the development of faster-than-light propulsion systems, and it is an exciting time for those studying the potentials of space travel. It could only be a matter of time before we are exploring the final frontier. Do you think any of these technologies will bring us beyond our solar system? With so many advancements in the past couple years, it's hard to think a major breakthrough isn't around the corner. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please like and subscribe for more content just like this.